Hey everybody, this is Aaron with GeoAce here for another QGIS in the field tutorial. Today we're going to cover the most requested topic that I've had so far, and that is external GPS in QField, um, specific to your iOS device. Now, uh, I have used Android often, uh, and I will say that it is easier in Android. However, uh, it's also very simple in iOS, it's just not as intuitive. So. Um, with that kind of being said, today I'm going to be using an EOS Aero 100. You can kind of see that there. Uh, no, in no way, shape, or form a paid advertisement. I've just been using this uh, submeter accurate GPS um, a lot over the past couple of years, both Android and iOS, and it does the job well for me. So um, uh, along with that comes the disclaimer for anybody who's not using an e EOS device that you may or may not have the same functionality uh, available to you um, as I'm going to be showing today because uh, our connection today relies on an, um, a, a third party software actually just put out by EOS um, that uh, kind of connects everything up for you behind the scenes and then you kind of uh, get into Q field and finish the job. So. Um, that is my long introduction. Let's go ahead and hop into the uh, tutorial. One thing that I probably should have mentioned is that uh, the first step in this process is one of the most important but also simplest. You need to actually just turn on your GPS device. So you can see here that you have the red button on the bottom or side depending on how you look at it uh, saying that the power is on and then I also have a blinking blue light here that's saying that the Bluetooth is activated and looking for something to pair with. And after that's done, we are ready to hop into our device. So let's go ahead and get started with that. All right, so now that we're in our iOS device, the first thing that we need to do is we need to actually connect the GPS. So you can see here, it's showing up in other devices. Let's go ahead and connect to that. It could take a couple seconds. All right, so now that it's connected, we're gonna go ahead and uh, download the EOS app. Now, again, um, I'm using an EOS system, so that's the device that I have to find. Uh, you can find it specifically for EOS by going to EOS GPS, hit search. It should be the first thing that comes up. EOS Tools Pro is what we're looking for, so that's good. If you're using a non EOS device, I'm sure, like a lot of, tri I know that Trimble has their own uh, mobile apps and things like that, but in this case, we're good to go. We're going to go ahead and set this up in the EOS app. Uh, how you do that is if you see in the top right here, there's a little circle with an I info, you hit that. And then uh, you can see things about the GPS. But the thing that we need to hit here is we actually need to activate our TCP server. So go ahead and hit that slider and note the port. So local host or 127.001, if, uh, for all you non-developers, that basically just means that it's telling um, your device that your GPS information is um, local to the device. So meaning everything is kind of running on the same thing. But anyway, uh, 3967 is our port. That's the thing that we care about. And we're gonna hit okay. We're gonna go to exit this now. That's all we really need to do. You can do differential correction and things like that, but um, we're just kind of getting started here. So we're, we're just kind of doing the bare minimum. So you can see here that we have about 10 meters of um, accuracy in terms of a rating. So that's usual or typical for an internal device. In, or, in order to tell that we are connected versus not, you can actually go to settings um, once you're inside of a project and uh, go to positioning. So there are three tabs, go to positioning. And uh, before we actually add our device, we're going to hit our activate accuracy indicator for one and we're also going to show position information show position information is the most important thing for this use case just to make sure that we are um, spot on with our accuracy so I'm going to hit add arrow 100 and then TCP is our connection type that's that all should look familiar and then the address should be uh, default to this but if not just make sure you put an either localhost or 127.001. Um, I think when I tried it, I had to put in 127.001. I don't think localhost worked, but uh, if you use localhost and it works, let me know, leave a comment. Um, anyway, uh, port 3967, and 
uh, it says connected to arrow 100, so we're good to go there. Um, next thing that we'd have to do is just take it outside to make sure that we have our accuracy. And assuming that we do, then we should be good to go. Okay, we just got done taking this thing out into the field, and we can confirm that we're successfully connected to the Arrow 100 using Q Field. As you can see here in the top, or excuse me, in the bottom left corner, uh, you see horizontal and vertical accuracy quickly falling below that um, submeter threshold, which is perfect for our GPS that we're using. And all that's left to do is to get out and collect some features, but you already know how to do that, so we're going to go ahead and cut the tutorial here. Um, if this was helpful, please like, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to support us moving forward, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks, and have a good one. Bye.